Hello, everyone. So I'm not going to tell you what our lecture is going to be about. You're going to tell me. So close your eyes and listen to this. share my screen. So today's lecture is going to be on Pokemon. And some of you guys actually are familiar with this. Let me get in here. Let me, do you want me to minimize myself or do you want me to, uh, I sort of like want to get out of here. But tell me if you prefer it, uh, if my base is there, but I don't know. <clears throat> Anywho, today we're going to talk about Pokemon. And a lot of you guys are huge Pokemon fans. Some of you guys from religious backgrounds are not. Actually, Pokemon has been banned, actually, in several Catholic schools as well as Christian schools, right? Because they recognize that it is culture, and a culture affects you. So, uh, and, and actually, it's very much Japanese culture. Because Japan, if you think about it, morphing, 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 that is evolution. And Japan is a country that believes in evolution. And this Pokemon... You think about your six-year-old self, you did not know that you're actually believing into Japanese cultural and spiritual beliefs. So let's start. So this is chapter seven in Anne Allison's book, Millennial Monsters, and it's called Pokemon, Getting Monsters and Communicating Capitalism. So my first question is, what is capitalism? What is, second question is, what is Pokemon? And my third is, is Pokemon still popular? So these are things I want to think about throughout this lecture. Like, and you know, you can pause it and write, pause right here, write down the answers if you like. But I want you to start always throughout this lecture, like think of these questions. What is capitalism? What's Pokemon? And is po Pokemon still popular? And kind of like a sub question is, is Pokemon Japanese culture? And I have to tell you, it definitely is. All right, so Anne Allison is a Japanese anthropologist. She's written uh, lots of books. She's, uh, in, she looks at political economy, post-industrial Japan, sexuality, motherhood, pornography, and labor. And so the, the chapter seven is out of her great book called Millennial Monsters. She's written a lot of books. She's quite famous uh, in the world of East Asian anthropology, well-known, and her books are well-cited, and you're reading it. So if you're in this anthropology class of Japan, this is a perfect book for you. All right, so there's thousands and thousands and thousands. I think I just looked at just a glance at uh, Amazon today. It was like over 20,000 books alone on Pokemon. So obviously there's thousands and thousands and thousands of books. And some of you guys have shown me your books to me. So there's lots of books to look around. And of, cor of course, in every language. Uh, uh, and it's wonderful. This is Japanese culture. This is Japan winning in the cultural war, which is happening around the world. Now, I'm not going to show a Pokemon clip, but I would like you to pause it, and I want you to actually YouTube saddest Pokemon moment, top five. Yes, I'm sure it'll have you in tears, so please do that. Top five saddest Pokemon moments. Yes, I can feel your, your like pleasure coming through the screen. All right, pause. All right, thank you for pausing, and now we keep going. Pokemon. Pokemon is a game of strategy, skill, 
perseverance, training, and knowledge. And the play activities is set to promote and, and to include collecting, competition, pet raising, adventures, and role playing. So this is an academic anthropologist of Japan. Yes, you can use your anthropology to look at games. And she looks at toys, Japanese toys. Now, do you think this is the reason why you love Pokemon? I want you to think back, like, why did you like Pokemon? A lot of students talk about how they had Pokemon cards, they had the video games, Game Boy, etc. And what's the goal of Pokemon? What is it? Collect them all. Yes. Okay. So it's a huge thing. This brings back a lot of memories. At this time, generally, students rush me to my desk and show me their Pokemon memories. And I go around the entire class and ask, what is your Pokemon memory? And, you know, 90% of the class has these deep emotional memories of Pokemon and other games and that they play Japanese games. But some students have never, you know, they came in a family that spanned it. So it's very interesting. It's always interesting to see. Now, I want to kind of go more into Japanese culture right? And I want to go deep because why is it that you guys were not into Doraemon? Because before there was Pokemon, there was Doraemon, this cute little cat. And in 1970s, Japan was experiencing economic uh, comforts of recovery, right? And this is when Japan Disney comes in. It's a huge thing. And also all the McDonald's. So basically, in, in a nutshell, Japan became rich. It became, they became rich. They had their own toys and their own cartoons. Doraemon, this little cute little thing, was one of the examples. It became as a serialization of boys' comic books. Um, it's really cute. It's like a wisecracker. Uh, it's kind of like he comes up to you and like if you think he's if he thinks you're ugly, he erases your face and he like redraws your face, or he, he erases you, or he makes you small and he puts him, himself. He puts you in his pouch. It's really cute. It's like adorable, and it's like it's in Spanish. It's in Italian, it's in Cantonese, Korean, it's like a global star. But why, Americans, did you not like Doraemon? Because Doraemon was so huge, okay? So again, it's like a boy's comic book, but now there's toys, there's cartoons, and it comes out. So Pokemon is kind of like the, not descendant, but it comes out after Doraemon, which it's really interesting because it's so popular all over the planet, but not in America as much, unless you're into like Japanese um, items. Now, I just actually ran into an administrator my age, and she was saying that she's obsessed with Rama one half. And I'm like, yeah, I love Rama one half. And it's so interesting because if you look all over, I had a lot of Latin American students when I was teaching at Whittier College, and like my Chilean students, my Peruvian would rush me and say, yes, I love Rama, Rama one half. And it's very popular all over the world, except for not in the United States. Now, Ra Rana. Ra random one half is interesting it's a uh, kind of a, a guy that's like running around i usually show a clip so if you want to pause it and youtube uh run and a half please do that because there's obsession all over the world about this cartoon and so when he gets like water himself he changes gender to a woman yeah he changes from a man to a female and so, so it's like really loved in the LGBT community, I, I've noticed. And it's, it's just a really uh, inclusive, and I don't think they thought of it as inclusive, but they, it's a cartoon that's really beloved in many communities around the world, but again, not popular in the United States. Why is that? So if you want to pause it, write down why it's not popular, because it's popular all over the planets, right? All over Latin America, but not in the United States. So do you know this boy? See his shirt, it says, gotta catch them all. Okay, is that Ash? Okay. He says, I was raised on Pokemon, which is why I feel a particular bond with it. And guys, I think a lot of you guys were raised with Pokemon. And Pokemon is a quite essential Japanese culture. You know so much about Japanese culture by just watching these cartoons. And it's actually on purpose because it's their culture, it's their religion, it's their spiritual beliefs. That's Pokemon, guys. I know. Tell that back to your six-year-old self. Now, children describe their play with Pokemon in the same terms. So all over the world, you ask kids, why do you like Pokemon? And they're like, whoa, you get to raise pocket monsters? You get to develop skills over time? And, and then kids, they feel like they're developing skills. They feel more instrumental, stronger. They're called their wards weapons and tools they use to premise on capture, right? So my question to you is, were you raised by Pokemon? Because I have to say, I'm pretty sure lots of you are Pokemon. 
themes, which means you know totally a lot about Japanese culture. But as any anthropologist or student of Japan uh, knows, okay, we got to analyze why, just like we got to analyze why people are into um, Hallyu, why people are into Kawaii, which is an example of Kawaii, which is popular culture, K-A-W-A-I-I, -I. write that down, K-A-W-A-I-I, -I, Kawaii. And let's go. Well, it's interesting. They love it because it's playful. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? What's his name? Is it a female or a he or a she? What's up with that tail? Is that a lightning bolt? Oh my God, it's so mesmerizing, that little chubby body, okay? So the first thing is, it's so darn cute. You can't deny it, the thing is just like so cute. <laughs> I'm like looking at like, oh my God, it's so cute. It's like a, what is it? Is it a fox on top of a corgi, on top of a lightning bolt, on a, oh my God, it's so chubby. And the second thing, it's flexible, right? It morphs, obviously. It transforms. Pikachu transforms. So what, is, what is Pikachu transformed into? Like the next one and next one? Okay. And it's across the human, non-human border. So again, something interesting, right? Um, it's not human, but it's not something else either. Okay. All right. So there's more than a dozen editions of Pokemon Game Boy. The game, okay. Um, there's so many of them. The latest Emerald, obviously, it's many more now, many, many more, okay, thousands, okay, there's multimedia arena and merchandise opportunities, a lot of people have Pokemon shirts, I've seen them everywhere I go, you see them, go to any K through five, and you're going to see a lot of Pokemon, t-shirts, wherever you go, it's a huge industry, it's marketed in many forms, and more than 140 countries are producing um, Pokemon stuff, and actually consuming Pokemon stuff, and, and producing global profits of over 15 billion, obviously, it's now more billions but i want you to think about that really deeply think about china china tries so hard to for you to accept and love their popular culture do you love Ch chinese cartoons no do you love their boy bands no do you love their clothes no but do you love pokemon yes so who is winning in this cultural war japan 140 countries these little cute little things like invading and conquering Okay, so here's the rub. And Allison says that Pokemon is a form of capitalism. Wow, that's really shocking. A lot of you guys are like shaking their head going, no, no, it's not capitalism. Well, that's her argument. The game is continual acquisition, which is capitalism. More money, more money, get more money, okay? And objects, okay? The object one gets are both thingified, value economically, and personified, cute monsters inspiring, perfect, inspiring affection, attachment, and love. The logic of play here involves a currency of shifting and multiple balances between spirits and profits, companions and capital enable and available rights. Capital is thus equally mimicked. Do you agree? Pause if you like. And yeah, that's the entire thesis of her chapter. Pokemon is capitalism. Pokemonization by Anne Allison. It's toy companies have always marketed to the U.S. market. They've always wanted to break it. Everyone wants to break into the U.S. because we're talking about 330 plus million people, okay? The Japanese government planned to sell its goods to the U.S. Write this down. The Japanese government planned to sell its goods. Not this individual uh, uh, company individually, but the government of Japan, just like how Disney is very much heralded and pushed by our U.S. government, which, you know, has had lots of interesting things where Disney has been accused of promoting kind of uh, sort of like capitalism in places like Chile and overthrowing governments uh, by using their Donald Duck cartoons, right? Um, Japan has used its government to promote Pokemon. So again, please do not uh, think that Pokemon is not a small thing. It's a huge thing. So after World War II, the country rebounded and successfully industrialized. In fact, Japan is one of the richest countries in the world. Pokemon evolves, and you must buy the newest one, like capitalism. Keep buying, buying, and buying. Now, Japan has a world reputation of producing high-quality goods and cars, VCRs, um, 
Pokemon games, etc. Okay, Pokemon becomes powerful through travel and power. Basically, it's an example of great globalization, just globalization of Japan, basically, of their Japanese power. Lecture series of how people enjoy and understand uh, Pokemon was not by this individual company, but by the Japanese foreign ministry. Again, I cannot emphasize enough how important to emphasize that this it's not just a toy, okay? It's pushed by the government, by the Japanese foreign ministry. This is huge. This is immense. Pokemon was not intended to be marketed outside Japan. I think I mentioned earlier that the greatest Japanese things are all often kept in Japan for a long time. Long, long time. When I was in Japan, I was amazed. Like so many robots, so many vending machines that do everything. And they kind of keep in Japan because they know they got good stuff. And after they get tired of it, then they actually will export it. So there are changes. The CEO of Nintendo noticed that Pokemon was not marketed and insisted that it must be in the United States. The Japanese refused to change Pokemon to suit American taste, but they did change a little things. For instance, Pokemon is very different from Disney and they have, Disney has strong males and weak females. That's very true. If you're a classic Disney fan, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna be Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty where she's literally sleeping Oh my God, that's totally no agency where a man has to like kiss her for her to wake up. Of course, the new new Disney is like, uh, you know, post 2000 Disney's of, you know, um, Mulan, Meredith, uh, you know, the Frozen people. Those are new Disney, but classic Disney really has a very strong male and weak female kind of like trope, right? Not the same for Pokemon. Everyone's strong. And sometimes we don't even know your gender, right? They're genderless, okay? And so some of the changes, they had to change some of the Japanese stories because it doesn't travel exactly. If you're from Asia, Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, they didn't really change it that much uh, because you sort of could understand it. I think that you probably could use the classic Japanese stories now, but back then they were, I guess, fearful that the American kids could not understand these Japanese tales, okay? So James the Cat turned into Blumbler, Meowth, is kind of a philosopher in the Japanese version, but a, kind of a wise caster, a wise cracker and the American version okay so last slide is pokemon still popular well let's see pokemon detective pikachu that was a huge movie pokemon go everyone in the world was using pokemon go and losing a lot of weight for that so again hugely popular so one can say yes very popular japanese culture winning in the global culture war for sure so that's my last slide if you have any questions, please email me at jen at mail.fresnostate.edu. And please do not email my canvas. All right. I, I can't wait to see you next class.